The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1. You will hear two people discussing an extramural course. Fill in the information you hear on the application form below. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now, here is the conversation. Hi, Jenny. What are you doing down here? Oh, hello, Steve. Well, I'm trying to fill in this form, but I'm having a bit of a struggle as I sprained my wrist playing tennis yesterday. Don't worry. I'll do it for you. Let's have your pen. Right, fire away. Mm, let's see. I want to do the drama and theatre studies. I'd like to get the certificate. The course number is uh, 60201. No, sorry, 202. It seems to be on Thursday at 7.30. Yes, well, we don't have to put all that down. Now, I suppose we can call you Miss. Don't be funny. And spell my name right. Hmm. Well, if you'll have a name like Jenny McPherson... Let's see. It's M-A-C. No. Big M, small c, no A. Right. M-C-P-H-E-R-S-O-N. Yes, OK. And don't forget it's a capital P, Macpherson. Now, what's your address? Well, I've just moved, so it's 6 Westway Avenue, Longford. Hang on, don't go so fast. 6 Westway Avenue, where? Longford. What's next? Your phone number, daytime and evening. Well, I've only got one, as we can't have calls at school in the daytime, so put down the evening one. 605-4829. 4829, OK. And you're a teacher. How old are you? 29? Mmm, wish I were. No, Thirty-two. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Do they want my date of birth? No, don't seem to. Just age. Uh, how about educational qualifications? Well, I've got a degree in English literature and a diploma in media studies. Media studies, right. Now, have you ever done any of these extramural courses before? No, don't think so. Although I did do something on psychodrama once. But no, it wasn't extramural, was it? That seems to be it, except for the fee. Yes, well, that's the same for all the central courses. I think £25. I suppose I have to include it with this form. <laughs> Looks like it. Uh, do you want me to write the cheque out for you? But uh, you'll have to sign it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You have just arrived at the student hostel where you will live during the term. The manager is explaining the rules and another student is asking questions.
Listen to the conversation and complete the form. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Excuse me, I want to ask you about the charges for meals. Are they the same as they were last year? No, I'm afraid they're not. We've managed to keep most of them the same, but we've had to increase the charge for breakfast. How much is it now? It's $2.50. It used to be $2.00. I see. What about lunch? It's unchanged. Still $3. Does dinner still cost $3? Yes, it does. We've managed to keep the prices down this year, but the best deal is the three-meal plan for $48 per week. We give you vouchers to present when you come into the cafeteria, and you get 21 meals for your $48. That works out to a little more than $2 a meal. The two-meal plan is also at last year's rates of $36 per week. We give you vouchers for that too. My sister was in this hostel before me. I'm sure the hours for breakfast used to be longer. Yes, they were. They used to be 7 to 9.30. But to keep our expenses down, we made them 7 to 9. Lunch is the way it was, though. Hold on. Dinner, 6 to 7.30. Isn't that a change? Yes, it is. And in fact, the form is wrong. It used to be 5.30 to 7.30, but now it's 6 to 8 p.m. 6 to 8 p.m., that's good. So, which plan would you like? I'd like to think about it, please. I need to check my lecture schedule. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Can you tell me how to get to my room, please? Of course. You're in the new wing, which is very freshly painted and pleasant. But I'm afraid you're going to have to go to a couple of other offices before you can have the key. You're in the admissions office now. Leave this office and turn right and go to the end of the hall. The last office is the fees office, where you can pay the balance of your room deposit. They'll give you a receipt. OK. After you've been to the fees office, come back past admissions. You'll see a very large room at the northwestern corner of the building. You can't miss it. That's the student lounge, and if you go in there, you can meet some of the other students and see who'll have a room near you. That's good. Can I get a cup of coffee there? Yes, there's a vending machine in the corner. Then go to the key room, which is opposite the lift and next to the library. Show them your receipt and you can pick up your key there. My luggage was sent on ahead. Do you know where I should collect it? The box room is next to the women's toilet. You'll have to get the key from the key room. Thank you. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two university students talking about a music course. First, look at questions 21 to 23.
As you listen, answer the questions. Josie, come in. How are you? I'm good. Can I get you a coffee or anything? No, that's okay. I can't stay long. But you said you wanted to talk to me about that course I'm doing this semester, Music 103. That's right. Actually, I was a bit confused because I thought you were majoring in maths. That's right. I am. I'm doing four maths modules this year, but it's an optional course. You just choose it if you're interested, and you can do it whatever department you're in. Why are you thinking about doing it? Well, I'm not sure. What are the requirements? What? The course requirements. I mean, what do I need to know about music to be accepted on it? I do listen to a lot of music, everything from hip hop and rap to classical, and I can sing, sort of. Well, for a start, one special thing about this course is that it's distance learning. You don't actually have to be at the university to do it, and you don't have lectures. So you've got to be able to work on your own without someone telling you what to do all the time. Oh, oh, no, that should be okay. I reckon. I'm more worried about the actual musical stuff. Like, I don't know how to read music. That doesn't matter. They don't assume that. You'll learn as you go along. How's your maths? Not too bad. Right. Some of it's quite mathematical, so you really need to be strong there. But you play the violin, don't you? I don't play anything. You don't need to. What about computer skills? You're okay there. Yes, reasonably. Does that matter? Yes, I'd say they're essential. Like I said, it's all distance learning, so it's computer based. Before the conversation continues, look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen to the second part of the discussion. What about lectures? You don't attend any. It's all online, so lots of the students aren't here in Canada at all. They're studying from home all over the world. We've got someone from my group in Jamaica, and a couple from Taiwan. Oh, and some from Hong Kong as well. So how does it work? Oh well, there's a multimedia course website on the internet where you can listen. You can listen and watch at the same time, and of course you can do it at your own pace. So if you don't understand something, you just go back. Or if you want some more examples of the music, there are links there to things that you can listen to. There's quite a lot of theory, but it's all done through musical examples, so it's practical at the same time. Like in the last module I did, we looked at a bit of the music from the movie Star Wars. The Darth Vader theme, you know. Dum 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 dum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then we looked at a theme from Wagner's Tristan and Isolde. Do you know it? Written in the 1850s, and we could see there were all sorts of parallels between them. And that's a feature of the course. We often look at modern Hollywood themes to illustrate concepts in classical music. Hmm. It sounds really interesting. Do you have a course book? No, we don't use one. We're given a software program called Notability Light, and what it does is it presents what we write, the music we write, really clearly, and it also allows us to play back any piece of music on our computer at home. But that's not all. We can write our own music, quite complex stuff for various instruments, and the program plays it back to us. Plays the actual music. Yes. So it means that your computer is actually your own musical instrument. And we can even submit our finished pieces to our tutor by email. So you do need your own computer, obviously. Yes, with at least sixty-four megabytes of RAM. That's okay. I've got a hundred and twenty-eight. Hmm. Oh, and a CD-ROM and a sound card, of course. No problem. So, how long is the course? It's six months. There are two a year, so you could actually enroll for the next one if you wanted. It starts in January. I started last September, and I finish in February. And how many credits is it? Three. In order to pass, you've got to do six assignments. I'm just doing my fourth one now, and take a final examination.、Oh, anyway, why don't you call round sometime, and I'll show you the sort of things we do.
You can even listen to some of my music. That would be great. Well, thanks, Josie. Now, are you sure you don't have time for that coffee? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear the speech made by Mr. Samaranch on the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. Listen and complete questions 31 to 40. Here is the President of the International Committee. Mr. Samaranch's speech out of the opening ceremony of the 26th Olympic Games, I'll read it for you. On behalf of the International Olympic Committee, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Games of the 26th Olympiad, Sydney 2000. The goal of the Olympic movement is to contribute to building a peaceful and better world by educating youth through sport practice without discrimination of any kind, and in the Olympic spirit. In the spirit, nations and youth of the world come together every four years to celebrate the world's largest sporting festival. SOCOG has organized these sporting competitions in consultation with the international federations, responsible for each sport. This is through nomination of technical officials, specification of technical requirements, and the cooperation with IOC and SOCOG on venue and other preparations. We thank each international federation for their vital efforts in the preparation of these Millennium Games. The Sydney 2000 Olympic Games is also the centenary of women's participation. With a record number of events and disciplines for women at the Games, the Olympic movement continues to recognise and support the vital role of women in sport. As we embark on a new millennium, it is the Olympic Games that will continue to unite the world and celebrate humanity. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you.